First and foremost, all thanks and praises unto our power, Yahweh, Bahashom, Yahweh Shai, Bahashom Wabrakakwadash. Peace, blessings, much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, on down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect <clears throat> throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth to the rest of the church who believe as well. You men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons, and daughters also. The water to Yahweh Shai, because without him enduring and going to that cross for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. I'm going to bring it out first with Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of the power and the promises. So who are the Israelites? When we talk about who the Israelites are, everybody's in an uproar. Everybody's offended. Everybody makes it as if what we're involved in is evil. Some evil cult. Okay? And the word cult isn't even an evil word. All right? But the Israelites are the ones who have been adopted back to the Heavenly Father through Yahweh Shai. And when Yahweh Shai returns, okay, are going to receive glory right along with him. The Israelites are the ones who were given the covenants, okay? The old and the new covenant, all right? The giving of the law that was given to Jacob. It wasn't given to any other nation. The service of the Most High, you know, being a prophet, okay? Being a, uh, a minister, being a servant of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you have to be an Israelite. All the promises that come with the covenant, all the promises that come with <clears throat> being an Israelite are to those who come out of the loins of Jacob, whose name was later changed to Israel. So when we say we're the Hebrew Israelites, we're not saying that as if this is some religion. The Israelites are the ones who have been given everything. The Israelites are the ones who Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is dealing with. And he's not going to give his glory to any other nation. Okay? That's why it says, and the glory and the covenants. The glory was given to Israel. Let's go forward. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another neither my praise to graven images. So Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is not giving his glory to another nation. The glory is going to be um, given to the Israelites. The Israelites are going to receive glory right along with Yahweh Shai. When Yahweh Shai returns, those who suffered with him are going to be glorified with him as well. This isn't speaking of any other nation. Okay? Let's go to the Apocrypha. And let's touch on <clears throat> the book of Baruch, chapter 3. Baruch, chapter 4, and verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. And who was the law given to? The Israelites. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. This is speaking to Israelites, those who came from Jacob. Verse 2, turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Give not thine honor to another. So, due to us being adopted, back to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, due to us being the people who were given the promises, who the Lord made the covenant with, we should not be given our honor to another. Why would you want to share your honor with an Edomite or a Moabite or an Ishmaelite or any other nation outside of your people? Okay, the glory, the honor is for Israel. I read that in Romans 9. But you have a lot of our people trying to share what the Lord has given us with heathen. And that's not going to apply. That's not going to fly. Okay? Give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee, 
to a strange nation. The covenants were made with us. Okay? The honor, the glory, the kingdom of heaven being adopted back to the heavenly father. Okay? The promises, all the perks, all the gifts, all the attributes of being a son of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is going to be given to Jacob. Why are you trying to share it with another nation? For you wicked, evil, simple-minded, rebellious Israelites out there. This is only for us. It's only for us. All right? Now what I want to do is go to 2nd Ezra in the Apocrypha still. 2nd Ezra chapter 3 and verse 36. Thou shalt find that Israel by name have kept thy precepts, but not the heathen. So stop trying to give your glory to another, to you Israelites out there. The glory is going to be given to Jacob. The covenant is with us. The laws were given to us. We are the Lord's people. All right. But our people, they just have a hard time understanding that you are favored above all nations. The Lord loves you, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Based off of your father's lineage, he loves you above all these other nations. Okay? No one has served Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai like the Israelites. And even if they could, they're still not going to be um, granted salvation. Let's go back to verse 32. Second Ezra 3 and 32. Or is there any other people that knoweth thee beside Israel? Or what generation hath so believed thy covenants as Jacob? And the answer is no one. Okay, let's go down to verse 34. Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance. And there is also that dwell, that dwell the world. And so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. So in all the world with all these different nations that exist in this earth, the Lord's name is only going to be found among Israel because he's only dealing with the Israelites, those who come out of Jacob. Or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in thy sight? Or what people have so kept thy commandments? Thou shalt find that Israel by name have kept thy precepts, but not the heathen. So stop trying to give your glory to another. The precepts, we've always kept them because they were given to us. The laws were given to us. All right. Psalms chapter 147 and verse 18. He sendeth out his word and melted them. He causeth his wind to blow and the waters flow. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So the point is this. We are the Lord's people. We are the Lord's servants. We have the spirit of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai within us. The spirit bears witness that we are the Israelites. That's why out of all the nations on the face of the earth, it's the Negro, Latino, and Native American that you see on the street corners teaching this word just like the ancient prophets did. Because we are the people. We are those who have been gifted the ability. We've been gifted the spirit. Okay, and the spirit shows that we're of Jacob. The spirit shows that we are the Lord's people. Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the power. So according to what the scriptures say, it lines up with our spirit. We are clearly the sons and daughters of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. The fact that we're the ones teaching the precepts. We're the ones on the streets doing what the ancient prophets did. Doing the same exact thing the ancient prophets did. Why is that? Because we're the same people. And we're some of those same men coming back. Doing the same thing. Just in a different body. You know, we're, we're given a different name. We have a, a different life that we're living. But the spirit within us was doing this before. All right? The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of the power. And of children, then heirs, heirs of the power. And who is that going to be um, shown with? The Israelites, man. 
Okay? Read Romans 9 and 4. In fact, I'll grab that again right after this because it's a chapter over. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Mashiach, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Because who is the glory for? The glory is for the Israelites. So with that, let's go back to Romans 9 and chapter 4. This is the importance of being an Israelite. We're not just saying this as a fashion statement or some trend. Although, yes, Israelites set trends all day long. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory? So we're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. We're going to receive glory when he returns. And the covenants made with the Israelites and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. That's why you see us teaching on the streets just like the ancient Israelites because we are the same people. We're doing the same thing our forefathers did. All right? So seeing that we've been given, you know, a particular, a particular position, we have to carry ourselves a certain way, man. We can't just be like niggas. We can't just be like your everyday person. We can't be like a brute beast, seeing that we've been given everything. We've been given the covenant, old and new, no other nation. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So the fault wasn't found in the old covenant. The fault was found in us. Okay? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Speaking of Israelites, because they continued not in my covenant. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a power and they shall be to me a people. So once Yahweh Shai returns and we get changed and we're given those new bodies, we're going to be under the new covenant. The old covenant, the old covenant wasn't at fault. We were at fault. We couldn't keep it. Okay? So due to the Lord's mercy, he's just going to write it in our inward part to just be perfect. We're going to keep the laws perfect. So there would be no need for us to fall away ever again. There would be no need for us to be thrown in slavery ever again. But that's only for the Israelites. That's only for the Lord's people. Okay? It's just pathetic that the majority of you Israelites... You don't even care that you're an Israelite. You're not even pondering on it. I'm going to close it here. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. So our people don't even uh, ponder on it. Our people don't even think on it. Our people don't even take a second to just ponder. Maybe I am an Israelite. That does make sense. No, our people would rather just say, you know what? I don't got nothing to do with that. I'm not an Israelite. That ain't got nothing to do with me. The Lord don't love me. I'm catching all this uh, diverse hell. And you're telling me I'm an Israelite. I ain't trying to hear that. All right? Our people ain't trying to consider that. Our people are focused on, you know, very small things. What I think the word is frugal. If I'm, if I'm using the word correctly. All right? So, seeing that we're the Israelites, our people don't understand how you have all these other people over us, but yet we're the Lord's people. They don't even consider it. I know I said I'd close it here, but I'm going to go to um, one more scripture. I'll read this again, and I'm going to go to one more scripture. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. So, our people don't even put two and two together. Our people don't even consider, yes, we are the Israelites, okay? They just don't care. And seeing that we're in a messed up position, you know, a lot of our people see that as a distraction. Why would, why would you even ponder on being an Israelite? My life is hard right now. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to do this and do that. I got to handle business. Second Ezra chapter 6 and 57. And now, O Lord, 
Behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. So our people see these other nations over us. And in their mind, it's like, well, there's no way. I'm trying to hear that right now. There's no way I'm an Israelite. All these other nations are doing better than me. I come from this. I come from that. I ain't never had nothing my whole life. Blah, j blah, j blah. I don't got time to be hearing that I'm an Israelite. Well, the thing is, the reason why we're in this position is because the Lord, okay, put these heathen over us to be lords over us because we've constantly went against him. But we're coming to that point where we're going to be, you know, delivered from the hands of our enemies. That's why our people are so messed up, so stressed out, so depressed, so deprived, you know, so um, full of misguided anger, you know, because we have these damn heathens ruling over us, starting with Esau, Edom at the top. All right. So seeing that we're the Lord's people, we're the Israelites, we're going to be given the kingdom of heaven. That is for us. It is not for you other heathen. And as much as you Israelites try to give our glory to another, it ain't going to happen. So I'm going to go on ahead and uh, wrap this up and give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wawakakodash.